so there are two types of decision tree categorical variable decision tree and continuous variable so for now let's just con so i'll kind of give you a brief idea but let's focus mostly on categorical variable for now uh, so as by definition it's already clear right categorical variable decision trees are those where the thing that you're trying to predict comes in discrete variable right so it's a discrete variable that you're trying to separate because it's a discrete variable it could have multiple classes right zero one two or three and so on and so forth so those are categorical variable where the variable you're trying to separate comes in discrete val values right whereas the values that you're trying to separate is basically a continuous variable so then it's called a continuous variable decision tree or a regression tree and so on and so forth there are multiple names for it but mostly decision trees when they came along for the first time they were mostly concerned about the fact of separating your classes and let's kind of keep that definition throughout the class throughout the lecture uh, because when we go to the regression part we'll kind of understand the intuition is still the same but for all pur practical purposes of considering this lecture we'll just stick to the idea of where we are trying to separate the classes so your variable comes in classes of 0 and 1 and you're trying to separate them so now kind of yeah so now let's kind of go back through the slides a bit so that we understand so we have done till this so now it says that so apart from being intuitive we use decision trees because they can handle non-linearity in data that i've already explained you now understand what is a non-linearity a non-linearity is something where by slightly changing your variable input variable your output was could have been changed drastically as well right that was an intuitive idea your model basically was easily describable by a line that could separate them in this image that you see here so there are these blue dots blue circles and red crosses right so yeah here so you can see that there is there is a blue circle and there's a particular linearly so do you think they are linearly separable the answer is no because there's not a clear line that could separate these two lines right so again this is exactly to the movie concept by which we had talked about so in this case the decision boundary would look like something like this if y is greater than some particular threshold then this is the, this is the boundary whereas if y is less than some threshold this is the boundary right so depending on your some particular input variable it's if it's above a threshold the decision looks very different versus if y is some less than threshold it looks something very different this is exactly the movie example we had talked about right the weather example if you remember the weather was good your model looked something very different weather was bad model looks very different so yeah don't bother about this statement about but this also leads to overfitting we kind of tackle this a bit later so now that you have understood till this point right so now to understand what exactly is a decision tree let's first spend a minute to kind of and think about questions which could probably you know let's think of those questions which we would want to kind of get answers to at the end of the session because if we don't think about them we are going to kind of lose track of things so first at your end also i would request you to kind of write down some questions that you want to take think about i'll be writing down a list of sample questions so which we would want to kind of take down at the end of the sessions so guys we took a one minute break break to kind of list down all the questions that we wanted to get answered at the end of the sessions hope you took some time at your end to list down some questions if not don't worry i've got it covered for you i've got already some questions that i have listed at my end which i have collected from all the sessions that we have done so before we kind of go and jump into all of those questions let's first kind of take a bit of time and understand what are the two most important questions that you want to get answered at the end of the sessions right to understand decision tree right so the first up question is given a decision tree let's let's now draw out a decision tree so this is how a decision tree looks like right so you have a decision tree initial node and then you split it into multiple child nodes right so at the first node you are basically taking say a decision based on age greater than 40 or not right so the first question to understand is how do you even come up with this number right how did you even come up with this age number 40 and even more important how did you come up with the decision that you want to you split based on age right so you first split on age then you split here on based on income so how did you even come up with these decisions right 
so that age is the first thing that you should split on income is the second thing that you should split on so that's that's the most important question right how do you decide which feature to split on at every node right so that's one question the second question on this as i was showing you was how did you come up with this number right in age greater than 40 income greater than 5000 so that's the other question, second more important question right how did you come up with this particular numbers and right and then the third and then obviously rest of the things are pretty understandable i have already talked about you how you kind of stop when you what are what are leaf nodes right what are terminal nodes so obviously if a decision let's now draw this decision node down so at this node say you are talking about education and then based on education you split again further and these are your terminal nodes and say on income and then you again check on education here so this is yes this is no this is yes this is no this is yes this is no so education greater than secondary this is let, let's say this is exactly how a decision tree looks like currently for a, say some bank application where you're trying to say if loan should be given or not right so the first criteria is age and then you have income and so as i've already discussed so the if you want to understand decision tree we have to understand this right this whole concept of how we started off with age why did we start off in the age in the first place if age was great if age was greater than 40 which is so this y and n basically are yes and no's so if age is greater than 40 then we decide to base split based on income right so why did we base, then decide to split based on income right so how did we come up with income and how did we come up with this corresponding numbers the other thing to understand is what are called terminal nodes right so when do you when do you kind of stop stop splitting further right so the easy answer to that is there are two possible options right as of what we have understood one is say if you somehow for some i for some way of splitting you have come up with this as that all the people in this nodes are all of them are ones and all of them in this nodes are zeros right so all ones and zeros ones and zero. so basically this concerns uh, so let's now see for this one right so probably in this case all of them are of one particular class and everyone here is of a particular different class right so if you reach a note for some reason where everyone has been either been given a loan or someone some note where everyone has not been given a loan then it's easy to understand right? you don't want to split them further because the whole job of splitting was basically at this note you had a lot of cross and zeros right you want to separate them out such that into two different nodes such that each node should contain either only zeros or it should contain only crosses right so that's what you have already been able to achieve here right here here and here right so cross and zeros are like ones and zeros right so you don't want to split them further because you have already reached nodes which are completely homogeneous within themselves and you there's no need to split because your whole job was to separate them and you have achieved that that's one reason why you should stop what could be the other reason why you should stop because probably there's no nothing to split probably you have reached a node which just consists of one person and there's nothing you can split around that right so obviously you don't want to split in those cases so those are two very intuitive cases why you should not split things further there could be some more reasons which we would probably end, discover at the end of the lecture but for now let's stick with these two reasons right one is your nodes that you have reached are already homogeneous within themselves they contain completely of one category of classes and the second is if they are just contain one person right so obviously uh, those are given that you understand that how our decision tree works during training time right so given a training data how do you fit on it but before we do that let's take again go back a bit and kind of understand how decision trees work while prediction right because it's pretty easy and intuitive right so understanding how decision tree now works during prediction time so now let's say a new patient new sorry not patient a new customer comes into the bank and he wants to apply for a loan and let's note down some of his features so his age is 55 his education is say greater than secondary 
and his income is 50,000 right so now let's see how you would predict whether to give him a loan or not right so how would you do that so you would say okay age greater than 50 age is 55 so age is 55 means he is falling into this particular node so this is where you split this is the first split right age greater than 40 or not so based on that you take a call that he should go into this branch of the decision tree now in this branch the next decision is income greater than 5000 or not so your income is 50,000 which is greater than 5000 so now you would follow this particular branch of the tree right and then you would basically say uh, education is greater than secondary or not which is yes right so this is the particular branch for it so here you see that all of them are zeros so which is probably well uh, this is basically we have not defined the class but whatever is the decision for all the people in this class which is either one or either zero right that's the decision you take to give the bank applicant a loan or not right so say if this was a loan where you said that everyone in this loan is given a everyone in this node is given a loan then you would say that okay for this new applicant who has come in uh, I see his age is he's basically falling into this particular bucket and in this particular back bucket you're consisting people of everyone who has been given a loan so then you give this person a loan as well right that's the idea uh, sounds fairly intuitive right given any new feature of the data set you basically see which all which is a particular branch of the decision tree this guy falls into and based on that you take a call whether to give him a loan or not right so had he somehow ended up in this node right so which is basically his education was less than secondary and he had ended up in this node then you would have said that probably not to give him a loan right so sounds fairly intuitive so for every decision for any given you applicant you basically figure out which is part of the decision tree he falls into and based on what is the final decision of the leaf node in which he falls into what is the majority of the people in that leaf node do what is the decision that has been taken on those people that is the same decision you would give out to the new applicant so now that you know that let's now go back to the splits and decision trees right so that's exactly how a decision tree works in real time real sorry in prediction time in prediction time you have decision trees and you're gonna basically see do the decision at every step and basically see which child node it falls into and then based on what majority of the people in that child node do that is exactly sorry not child in the terminal node you basically figure out which is the terminal node this particular person is falling into and based on whichever node he falls into that's the decision the majority the majority decision of that terminal node is what is the decision you would take for this particular new applicant right so that's how it works in prediction time now let's understand how how decision trees work in training time right so now to understand that let's first understand the overall objective of training decision trees right your training decision tree the overall objective is this now again let me so okay we can draw here only i think so we have a lot of crosses and zeros this is a mixture right so this is an impure uh, uh impure node right the root node is completely impure impure as in it contains people of both classes 0 and classes 1 and they are mixed together your whole idea of while fitting a decision tree is basically to separate them as much as possible right you want to somehow using some split or the other take them out into two different classes right that's your whole goal of decision tree you want to somehow come up with features some way of decisioning such that your nodes your examples of class zeros fall into one particular bucket or into separate terminal buckets and classes of one class sorry data samples of cat class one fall into separate terminal nodes right so you want them to fall as i was explaining in prediction time you the only way you would stop splitting a decision tree intuitively is basically when you have terminal nodes which contains a cat data samples completely of class one or completely of class zero so you have a root node which contains both class zero and class one and you want to separate them out such that class zero is one category class one is a different terminal node right so you want to separate them out such that class zero is one terminal node or multiple terminal node but all of them should contain class zeros and class one's a different terminal node and all of them should just contain class one by themselves right 
So think of it like a mixture problem, right? Where you have oil and water mixture and your whole job of building the algorithm is basically come up with those filters such that you can separate your oil from your water, right? So that's exactly how a decision tree works. So to kind of build on this intuition, let's kind of, let's go through, uh, let's go through a particular data set and understand that, right? Let's take a small toy data set and build our intuition, right? That's what we have been doing in all of the lectures. So now we are going to talk about a data set, which is called the film data set, where we have basically recorded the responses of 50 people uh, when they like to watch this movie, Dunkirk or not, right? So I think it's a pretty, pretty famous movie. Yeah, no, I've not watched it. I don't know. So Dunkirk is something that is, we are recording the responses of 50 people, whether they would want to watch or not. So that is this particular variable that you see here, right? So, wow. Uh, yeah, watching is this particular variable that is that says if someone would want to watch the movie. Now for each of those, that is a target variable, right? So if you're using logistic regression, you would normally, you this is a one and zero variable and you can fit a logistic regression easily on this. But if it is not, uh, if you're trying to use fit during decision tree, let's be kind of go into that right now. We don't want to talk about logistic anymore. Uh, so for let's now understand what the input features looks like. So input features are basically your gender, age and employment status, right? So gender, male or female, age 28 plus or not and employment status, student or working. Those are the three basically features that we have recorded for each of those 50 people. And we are trying to predict for any given 51st person whether they would want to see the movie or not, right? So again, to put it in perspective, this is a decision node, this is a root node which consists of your impurities and all you want to do is somehow figure out of some split, right? Either you split based on gender or you split on employment or you first split based on gender, then on employment. Somehow, somehow your goal is basically to split such that all people who have watched the movie are in one bucket and all people who have not watched the movie are in different bucket. They are currently in the root node of 50 people all of them are mixed together. Now let's first understand how well they're mixed, right? So, so in this data set, we can see that there are 26 people who have watched the movie and 24 people who have not watched the movie. So they are currently mixed together in the root node, right? In the root node, there are all 50 of them together. But ideally, we would want to somehow separate them such that your 26 people and this 24 people are in different buckets, probably, you know, in buckets of 13, 13 or 12, 12 or however it is, all you want is somehow to separate them out, right? Now let's first build an intuition of how this data looks like, right? So you have total 50 people and of those 50 people, this is how the split looks like, 50 to 48, right? Yeah, so this is the entire data set, right? So this, obviously, this, the split currently overall, right? So let's... Overall, the split looks like this. 52% people have watched the movie and 48% of the people have not watched the movie. Right? So 52 and 48. So that's a 50-50 split. We don't want that. Ideally, we want split such that which is 100-0, right? That's the ideal split which we would want to go ahead with. So 50-50 splits are basically impure splits, right? So overall, there's a 50-50 split and all you want to do is somehow separate this 50-50 split into such distinct groups as that people who have watched movie are in one category, people who have not watched are in another. So now let's now let's look how it would, how this scenario kind of spans out when you split based on all the different categories. So in this case, we just have recorded three variables and we can only split based on those three features, right? So now let's, see what happens if we split based on gender if we split on based on gender so there are 28 males and 22 females and of those 28 males 42 percent have watched the movie and 63 percent have in 63 percent among females have watched the movie in case of gender so these are people who have watched the movie this is people not watch the movie in case of gender if we split so we have a 42 and a 63 percent of the people have so 42% of males have watched the movie, 63% of the ma females have watched the movie. So the split here looks like this, right? So among males, 42% have watched the movie. So 58% of the males have not watched the movie. 
Among female, 63% have watched the movie, 37% have not watched the movie, right? Fairly intuitive. There's nothing much rocket science here. So let's now go ahead and see how the split based on age looks like. So age 62, if you're age less than 28, then 60% of them have watched the movie. If your age is greater than 28, then 40% 40 of them have watched them, right? So 60, 40, 40, 60. Now let's look how the splitting based on employment looks like. So employment again, if you look at this, so out of those 50 people, 41 people are working, 9 people are students. And of them, 22 people out of those 41 people have watched the movie. Out of 9 students, 4 people have watched the movie, 5 people have not. So 53.6% of the working professionals have watched the movie. 44% of the students have watched the movie, right? Note that down now. Fifty-three have watched the movie. That means forty-seven have not watched the movie. And here we had forty-four, fifty-six, right? So now, if you see in this diagram, so you can see that. Uh, so what, according to your intuition, should be a good idea, good feature to split on, right? So the first question we are trying to still answer the first question in decision tree is that. Among all the possible three features that we could split on, which is gender, age and employment, what is the one that we should go ahead with, right? So our idea, as I've said, is this, this setup that the first in the root node, the thing is already not very good, right? You have 50-50 split almost. 50% of the people, roughly 52% of the people are actually have watched the movie, 48% people have not watched the movie. So that is impure node. You want to somehow from there, you want to get into nodes which are either consisting completely of people who have watched the movie or consisting completely of people who have not watched the movie. So we don't like 50-50 kind of split. We want something like a 100-0 split. So now among all the possible options, you see that employment is definitely not a good option, right? Because there you can see that splits are 53-47 and 44-56, which is roughly slightly better than the overall condition. But it's again, it's as good as 50-50, right? It's almost the numbers are not that great. So this is something you can definitely don't want to split on because you can clearly see that 53 and 47 are very close to 50-50, right? So this is very close to a 50-50 split, you don't want to go. So now among gender and age, there are two possible options, right? So both of them look decently good. This is almost a 58-42, that is roughly a 60-40 split. This is 63-37. Here, both the cases, you have 40-60 split. So definitely for all you know, these two options are definitely much better than employment, right? We don't know exactly among gender and age which one to go ahead with. But for all that we know is that we definitely don't want to go ahead with employment because that is roughly a 50-50 kind of a split, which is not something we are very happy to go ahead with, right? We want something to be as good as 60-40 is preferable. If we had some feature for which we got 70-30 or 80-20 kind of split in both the nodes, we would definitely want to go ahead with that, right? So given that is the idea that we, the whole idea of decision tree is basically to do this, right? We, uh, we have nodes and we have them impure at the starting and we want to somehow implement some decisioning algorithm such that your impure nodes are basically separated out into more pure nodes, right? Log on to Grey Atom's learning platform to unlock more free content. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates.